Okay, the word slit, what should you think of? Sorry? Light. Yeah, you should think of diffraction, right? You should think of waves and diffraction. So, I would take something like a laser, maybe a screen, uh, a meter stick. You don't need a meter stick and a ruler. You don't need a stopwatch. This is one of those things where if you pick stopwatch, this is called the idiot tag. <laughs> if you choose that, it's like the grader can just skip the rest of the cloud problem. It's like unclear on the concept. So don't pick stopwatch if it's about light. Okay? <laughs> and, yeah. and if it's about people running, don't pick a laser pointer. Unless part of your hypothesis is to shine a light in their eyes and see if it makes them slow down. I don't know. Uh, okay. So anyways, um, I would take this stuff and then sketch a diagram of the experiment. So I would shoot the laser pointer. I think 635 is green, so I'm guessing. Um, shoot the laser pointer at the two at the slits or at the slit here. Then I'd have my screen back here. And then I'd have the meter stick right here. And you, you literally have to do this. Please be aware. Sketch a diagram of your experiment setup and label the pieces of equipment that would be used. Okay? So you literally have to label everything. I have docked people points, personally docked people points because they didn't put the labels. It says, follow the direction. Okay? And then hopefully what's going to happen is we're going to get like a bright thing here, and then a little bit of a kind of a bright thing like that, but pretty much faded. Okay, um, then part C, uh, outline the experimental procedure you would use, including a list of quantities you would measure uh, for each quantity, identify the equipment that you would use to make the measurement. So uh, I would say use the meter stick to measure, oh, sorry, not that one, to measure this distance right here, and I would call that L, right? And then I would use the meter stick to measure this distance, and I would call that X or M or whatever you want to call it. Right? And then that's pretty much all I need. Okay? Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I'd say set that up, measure this distance, and then shine the light, and then measure that distance. Explain how you would calculate the slip width D by using the measured quantities included. Sorry, i got to erase this. So we know. Um, so, let's make sure we're not our field here. Um, length measuring device, laser pointer. Oh, you could have done the laser pointer. Oh, oh okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Because uh, if you use the lamp, then you're using the prism because you're trying to get a specific frequency to shine through the slit. Do you get, do you get that part? Right? You can't use regular white light because white light has all the different frequencies in it. So you have to use um, a prism to spread the light, and then you can move it so that you can get like only the red light to hit the band, and then you can get an approximate frequency. I would just use a laser pointer, but that's me. So I'll use a laser pointer, slit screen, there you go, there you go, that's nice. And then it's like shining a laser pointer to the slit, and then measure this one distance, you see the measure the distance from the slit to the screen, uh, interference pattern formed on the wall. And then you just use the equation that we all just did. covers all interference. Boom! That equation covers all interference, right? Um, so then, uh, if you do that, oh yeah, L is much bigger than X. M. Okay, that's fine. Oh, you can use this too, so that's fine. Either way it works. I would have just used that. And you'll get D, you know, solve that for D, basically. Uh, everybody know what these different things are, yes? Okay, good. So everything looks good there. And then part E, suppose the separation D between strips was increased, but everything else is kept the same. What changes would you expect to observe? Explain your reading. Um, well, just by looking at the equation, if you increase D, 
then x is going to decrease. And like, so basically, if d, if, d, if d was really tiny, and it was like a great like pattern, you could see like the bright, and then you could see the clear wave. You know what I mean? Remember I showed you on the board? Everything looks kind of fuzzy in that color. So like everything's going to look great, but then you can see the, the darker strips. So then what, if you make D bigger, then the distance from the, um, the, the central bright band to the first band gets smaller. And then eventually, like if you make D too big, the laser beam is just going to shine straight through. Yes? No? Okay. So yeah, um, central bright maximum gets narrower, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay. So there you go. Pretty straightforward. Looks crazy. What do you do? How do we do this? But it's just that equation right there. Right? And, and how do we know it was that equation? Because remember, we had problems with this. We dealt with that when we did diffraction. And so you say, oh, this is slit. It's about light. And then what equations do we have for light? Boom, go to the light section. All right? And that's the first one. I wonder how to do this that close. <laughs>